Welcome to the Make course, I'm Rudi Schlaf. In this tutorial we will discuss numbers, variables, variable types and type definitions. So we will look into these statements that you find in C++ codes like int, counter, float, measurement value, etc. We will examine how variables are stored in memory and we will discuss the different variable and number types. Before we get started with the tutorial I should point out that you should be familiar with the Arduino a little bit and if the serial port and how to communicate with the Arduino through the serial port is a mystery to you then please visit eeawesome.com I'm here on the website and you should watch videos 1 through 4 at least because here you end up uh, using the Arduino serial port and so if once you do these four videos you are ready for this tutorial before we start talking about C++ variable types and so forth Let's uh, go back to high school for a moment and review the different types of numbers that are out there. The real numbers, they encompass all numbers. So we have the number axis here and we can have numbers on here with an infinitely resolved grain. Uh, pi is an example of such a number. It has an infinite uh, number of digits after the decimal point. Now integer numbers on the other hand they are whole numbers and when we talk about integer numbers we usually mean numbers that go from minus infinity to plus infinity including the, the zero in a whole number steps. Now if you just refer to whole numbers that typically means we're going from zero on to positive infinity. Now if we write programs using numbers we need to decide how we store them in memory and for that we have the variable types and so when it comes to integer numbers we have variable types like these here byte, integer, long integer, character and boolean we will talk about this more uh, down the road in this video when we play with the Arduino so here in these variable types we store whole numbers sometimes with sign and sometimes we assume they're all positive when it comes to real numbers there the challenge is that we need to make a decision how many significant digits we want to use for our calculation because obviously uh, if you wanted to store a number like pi with its infinite number of digits then you would need to uh, use an infinitely sized memory chip and of course that's not available so for practical purposes we say okay we can get away with eight digits for our calculation and so we use a variable type that uh, uses enough memory to store these significant uh, digits. So the mostly used uh, variable types uh, for floating point numbers are float with single precision and double with double precision. So double uh, uses twice the memory and so we can put twice as many significant digits into it. In practical terms this means that we need to tell the microcontroller how many variables and what type of variables we want to use for executing the program code. That is done with type definitions and so in a type definition we essentially create a message for the compiler that compiles your program before it can run on the Arduino how many bytes we need to use for each variable and so we tell it okay we want a integer variable a and so the compiler creates a pointer to a memory address and then blocks the two bytes that are coming after this address in the memory for that uh, variable. If you define a floating point variable of standard precision then you would need four bytes and so the type definition uh, in the program would say okay we need a floating point variable of name b and uh, we need four uh, uh, bytes for that and so the compiler would essentially generate a uh, pointer to a memory address and then reserve the four bytes that come after this address. The syntax of these type definitions is simple. We simply state the variable type that we want and then follow it up with a list of variable names separated by commas and don't forget the semicolon at the end. Okay, let's put this to the test. I made a small Arduino sketch here 
From now on in, if you want to reproduce this on your own, then you need to have the Arduino hooked up uh, through the USB cable, but that's all you need. So in the beginning, I have three type definitions. I make an integer variable and a single precision floating point variable. So they're called integer variable, float variable. And then I also define here for the fun of it, a variable type that's called bool, and that's a Boolean variable. This is not part of the Arduino IDE, uh, but part of the standard C++ setup, and so it doesn't show up in orange, but nonetheless, this here is a valid uh, type definition. Then here in the setup, all we do is we start the serial port so we can talk to the Arduino. So this is explained in video number four of the eeawesome.com videos. The port runs at 9600 baud, and that is the standard setting for the serial monitor that's built into the Arduino IDE, and so we don't have to set anything in that uh, serial monitor. It should work right out of the box. Then in the main loop, we assign values to these variables and then we print them out through the serial port so we can see what actually ended up in each of these variables after we do these assignments here. And so each of these variables is printed with, with its name first and then the actual content of the variable. So in the printout we can distinguish between each of the three variables and see what happened to them. Print LN, if you recall from video number four, that makes a line feed. So the cursor in the uh, in the serial monitor goes back to the uh, left side, and we start a new line. So that allows us to print these three variables in three lines. Okay, let's upload and see what we get back through the uh, serial port. So it's still uploading, and here we're done. And so now we activate here the serial monitor. And so here you see it. I turned off the auto scroll feature earlier. So when you turn it on, it just keeps printing because we're running this loop here indefinitely. So if we really want to look at it, we turn the serial monitor here from auto scrolling to manual scrolling. You see here it's still filling up. But anyway, we can now look at the variable. And so what we see here, the integer variable came out to be 314. And so you see here what I said earlier, integers essentially don't care about the fractional part of the number. And so what happens here uh, under the hood, so to speak, is a type conversion. So we offer a floating point value to an integer variable and the compiler knows that this variable doesn't care about or cannot deal with the fractional part and so it simply drops it and puts just the integer part uh, into the variable. Now the float variable, on the other hand, if you look at it here now, the float variable, that contains the entire number, including the fractional part. So you see right away that the float variable is needed if you want to operate with real numbers. An interesting thing is the Boolean variable. So if we look here at the Boolean variable, it came out at 1. And look here what we did. We assign the integer variable to the Boolean variable. And so essentially what that means, we're trying to write 314 uh, 0.16 into the boolean variable and what came out of the boolean variable once we print it down here is a 1 and so you see that this type of variable can only have a 0 and a 1 in there and the uh, program makes sure that this happens so this is a very convenient way to convert a range of numbers into a in, into logic values that you can actually use for making decisions okay so far so good you just learned that variable types can be converted so that they match the variable into which they are assigned. But there are some caveats with this process. Let's play with this a little bit. So let's make this integer variable uh, into a single byte. So we can just say here type definition byte and that gives us an integer variable that has only eight bits that only covers one byte. And of course, you know that the largest number in the binary system that you can save in a byte is 255. So let's see what happens when we try assigning the 314.16 to that single byte integer variable. So let's, load, let's upload this and start the serial monitor. And so if you look here now at the integer variable, it comes out as 255. 
So if you think of it, this may make sense. So the compiler says, okay, 314.16 is larger than 255. So let's put at least um, as much in here as we can. And we cut it off at 255. But let's do an experiment now and change this here to 313. Let's see what happens now. Okay, let's start the serial monitor. And now look what's in the integer variable, 57. Isn't that strange? So how is that connected? Well, the point is this, that the 313, it is equivalent to a two byte number, right? Because it's larger than 255. And so in the binary system, um, we have part of this number in one byte and part of the, of the number is in the second byte. And in this type conversion here, simply one of these two bytes is being used as uh, the number that is put into the integer variable. So when we had 314.16 here, then we were just lucky uh, that we ended up with 255. And so that gave us the impression that uh, we would simply cut off at the highest number. But in reality, uh, it's a more complicated process and not very predictable. Um, for such a type conversion purpose. So the lesson learned here is that when you define variables, they need to be appropriate for the values that you want to store in them. So you need to think about what values this variable may have to deal with in the uh, course of executing your code. Okay, that's all for now about numbers, variables, variable types, and type definitions. Thanks for watching.